cancer is something we hear about a lot, but many people don't realize just how far back its history goes. The story of cancer stretches over thousands of years, and doctors have been working to understand it for a long time. In fact, the earliest known descriptions of cancer date all the way back to ancient Egypt, around 1600 BCE, where doctors wrote about tumors and tried to treat them. The word cancer, itself, comes from the Greek word karkinos, which means crab, used by the famous Dr. Hippocrates to describe the way tumors looked. Over the centuries, our understanding of this disease has grown, leading us to the advanced treatments we have today. In this video, you'll learn more about where cancer came from, so we can appreciate just how important today's medical progress is. Cancer has been around for thousands of years, and some of the earliest records of it come from ancient Egypt. In fact, one of the oldest known medical texts, the Edwin Smith Papyrus, written around 1600 BCE, describes what seems to be breast cancer. The Egyptians tried different ways to treat it, including surgery, but even back then, doctors noted that there wasn't a cure for this mysterious disease. Fast forward a few centuries to ancient Greece, and we see another major development in how people talked about cancer. The famous physician Hippocrates, who lived around 460 to 370 BCE, used the word karkinos, which means crab in Greek, to describe tumors. He thought the finger-like spread of the cancer reminded him of a crab's legs, which is how the name cancer eventually came to be. At that time, people didn't know cancer was caused by changes in cells. Instead, doctors followed the humoral theory, which suggested that the body was made up of four fluids, or humors, blood, phlegm, yellow bile, and black bile. They believed disease came from imbalances in these fluids. Cancer, they thought, was caused by too much black bile. This theory stuck around for centuries, even though today we know that cancer is actually a disease of the cells, not the body's fluids. After the advances in ancient Egypt and Greece, the study of cancer, like much of medical research, saw a significant decline during the Middle Ages. This period, which spanned from around the 5th to the 15th century, was marked by a heavy reliance on religious and superstitious explanations for disease and scientific progress slowed. Many illnesses, including cancer, were thought to be divine punishment or the result of imbalances in the body, as believed through the ancient humoral theory. However, during the Renaissance and the Enlightenment, which followed the Middle Ages, medical research began to revive. One of the key figures of this period was Andreas Vesalius, a 16th century anatomist. His work in mapping human anatomy was groundbreaking. By dissecting human bodies, Vesalius provided detailed illustrations of human organs and systems, though cancer remained poorly understood at the time. It wasn't until the 18th century that Giovanni Morgagni made significant progress in the study of cancer. In 1761, Morgagni's work in conducting autopsies and linking diseases to changes in organs laid the foundation for modern cancer pathology. By examining organs post-mortem, Morgagni discovered that specific diseases, including cancer, were connected to visible changes in the body's tissues, an insight that helped shift the way doctors approached diagnosis and treatment in the centuries that followed. The modern understanding of cancer took a huge leap forward in the 19th century, thanks to the groundbreaking work of Rudolf Virchow. He was the first to propose that cancer is a disease of cells rather than a result of humors or bodily imbalances, as previously believed. Virchow's research showed that cancer begins when normal cells start dividing uncontrollably. This insight shifted the entire medical perspective as doctors realized that cancer was rooted in cell biology, rather than mysterious fluids or environmental factors. Fast forward to the late 20th century, and our understanding of cancer advanced even further with the discovery of genetic mutations. Researchers found that changes, or mutations, 
in the DNA of cells can trigger this uncontrolled cell division, leading to the development of tumors. These genetic insights paved the way for more targeted cancer treatments, such as precision medicine, which focuses on the specific mutations driving the cancer. This approach represents a major shift from older, one-size-fits-all treatments, giving doctors the ability to personalize therapies based on the unique genetic profile of each patient's cancer. Cancer is not just a single disease, it's actually a group of more than 100 related diseases. Each type of cancer can develop in different tissues or organs in the body. For example, breast cancer starts in the cells of the breast, while lung cancer begins in the lungs. These different types of cancer behave in unique ways and may require different treatment approaches. Over time, as doctors learned more about cancer, they began to categorize it based on where it starts in the body and the type of cells involved. For example, carcinomas are cancers that begin in the skin or the tissues that line internal organs, while sarcomas start in bones, muscles, or connective tissue. Leukemia affects the blood and bone marrow, and lymphomas begin in the immune system. This growing understanding of the different types of cancer has allowed doctors to develop more specific treatments for each type. Instead of treating all cancers the same way, they now target treatments based on the specific type of cancer and, in more recent years, even the genetic mutations driving it. As the understanding of cancer grew, so did the search for ways to treat it. One of the earliest major breakthroughs came in the early 20th century with the discovery of radiation therapy. Thanks to the pioneering work of Marie Curie, she discovered radioactivity and soon after, doctors realized they could use radiation to shrink or destroy tumors. Radiation therapy became one of the first effective treatments for certain types of cancer, and it is still widely used today. Another major leap forward came during World War II with the discovery of chemotherapy. It was found that mustard gas, a chemical used during the war, could shrink tumors by killing rapidly dividing cells, which is exactly what cancer cells do. This led to the development of chemotherapy drugs, which attack fast-growing cancer cells, and chemotherapy remains a cornerstone of cancer treatment. Today, cancer treatment continues to evolve with cutting-edge advancements like immunotherapy. Unlike chemotherapy or radiation, immunotherapy harnesses the body's own immune system to recognize and destroy cancer cells. This newer approach has shown great promise especially in treating cancers that are resistant to other treatments. Modern advancements like immunotherapy are paving the way for more personalized and effective treatments, giving patients more hope than ever before. The progress in cancer treatment wouldn't have been possible without the work of some remarkable scientists and doctors. One of the first to make a significant impact was Paul Ehrlich in the late 19th century. He introduced the idea of the magic bullet a treatment that could specifically target disease-causing cells without harming healthy ones. While his early work focused on treating infections, his concept laid the groundwork for what would eventually become chemotherapy. And of course, as we've mentioned earlier, Marie Curie, another key figure, made groundbreaking discoveries in radioactivity that paved the way for radiation therapy. Her work not only revolutionized cancer treatment, but also opened up entirely new areas of research in medical science. Curie's pioneering efforts earned her two Nobel Prizes and made her one of the most important figures in the history of cancer treatment. Later in the 20th century, Sidney Farber became known as the father of modern chemotherapy, especially for his work on leukemia. He was the first to show that drugs could be used to treat cancer in a way that shrank tumors, specifically in children with leukemia. Farber's work helped establish chemotherapy as a mainstream cancer treatment and brought new hope to patients with previously untreatable cancers. On a personal note, having gone through chemotherapy myself, I know firsthand how tough it can be. However, thanks to modern treatments and the guidance of doctors, I'm grateful to be in remission from double hit lymphoma. This experience has made me appreciate just how vital it is to trust medical professionals and follow their advice on the best course of action. Cancer research has come a long way, from ancient beliefs about humors and imbalances to our modern understanding of it as a complex, cell-based disease. 
Over the centuries, scientists and doctors have transformed the way we think about cancer, developing treatments like radiation, chemotherapy, and now, cutting-edge therapies like immunotherapy. Each breakthrough has brought us closer to understanding and treating this disease in a more targeted and effective way. Looking ahead, the future of cancer research is filled with promise. Emerging therapies such as precision medicine aim to create highly personalized treatments based on a patient's unique genetic makeup. This approach offers the potential for even greater success in targeting cancer cells while sparing healthy ones. With continued research, there's hope that we can one day prevent, treat, and perhaps even cure cancer in ways we never thought possible. And that wraps up our video. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon so you never miss our future content. We'd love to hear from you. What questions do you have about cancer prevention, treatment, or survivorship? Are there specific aspects of cancer you'd like us to explore in future videos? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and let's keep the conversation going. Remember, understanding the complexities behind health issues like cancer empowers us to take better care of ourselves and those we love. So keep asking questions, stay informed, and continue seeking the truth behind these critical health topics. Thanks for watching. Stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next video.